Welcome to another video. This video is for those who are still practicing their integration skills. And there's something I want to bring up here. Look at this. This looks like a rational function. This also looks like a rational function. It's just that they are not polynomials. This is a trig expression. This is an exponential expression. But they still have the form of a rational function. Now, whenever that happens, consider the degree of the numerator and the denominator. If they are the same, do what I'm about to show you. The same thing here. If they are the same, do what I'm about to show you because it makes your life a lot easier. Let's get into the video. Now, this is what I recommend you do here. There are many strategies for integrating this, but the one I think is the most efficient is when you do some kind of long division or you rewrite this. So there are two ways you can achieve what I'm about to show you. So what I can do is I can say, hey, let's do some long division. Put the top one here. Write it as cosine x plus 3. Put the bottom one here. Write it as negative cosine x plus 2. Okay, as if you're writing a linear function with the variable first. Now, if you do your long division, you ask the question, what would I multiply negative cosine x by to get cosine x? Well, the answer is negative 1. When you multiply, you get cosine x. When you multiply, you get minus 2. When you do your subtraction, this answer is going to be 5. So, ultimately, this integral you have, this expression that we have here, can be written as this is the integral of negative 1 dx plus the remainder 5 over the divisor, which is 2 minus cosine x. So we have successfully rewritten this expression in a much easier fashion. The same thing is going to happen if you apply the same rule here. Okay, I've used long division here, but if you don't want to use long, long division, you could do um, like skillful rewriting of the top. For example, I'm going to say, hey, 2 minus e to the x, I want to write 2 minus e to the x here, but I have to manipulate the whole thing so that what happens, you could have used that strategy here too. So I could have said, okay, I have 2 minus e to the x. On top here, I am going to have minus e to the x, 2 minus e to the x. But what's on top is not 2 minus e to the x. It is 3 plus e to the x. So this e to the x has got to be positive. So I could multiply this by a positive number, a negative rather. So with this multiplication, now I have minus 2 plus e to the x. But, so I have plus e to the x, but now I have minus 2, but I need it to be 3, so I've got to add 5. So now, if I cancel these two, I get minus 1, and I still have 5 over 2 minus e to the x, which is similar to what I have here. So this is still the same thing as the integral of minus 1 dx plus the integral of 5 over 2 minus e to the x dx. So the same simplification has applied to both of them. We can integrate this easily getting the answer. We can integrate this the same answer. It's going to be negative x. This is where they now differ because the strategy that works here doesn't work here and this one does not work here because they are different functions and behave differently. If you've seen my previous videos on how to integrate expressions involving cosine or sine where you cannot use u substitution because u substitution will help you. And if you do the rationalization strategy, it's going to be you're going to it's going to take longer. The fastest way to getting your answer is to do a bias to as substitution. And what that means is you're going to say let t be tan of x over two. That's what works here. That's the fastest that I know of. Okay. Now, if you want to do complex strategy of using imaginary or complex numbers, well, that might work, but it doesn't work for real, um, for calculus too, because um, that's not something you've done. Now, if you're going to advanced math, you might start pursuing that, but I'm doing this for Cal 2 students. So, what you want to say is, you say, let, 
let t be equal to tan x over 2. This is via stress substitution. And just by making this assumption, okay, or making this uh, claim, assumption, okay, you automatically get some standard values for cosine, sine, and for the derivative dx. So here we have cosine x automatically becomes 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. That's what you must get. You automatically get sine. Okay, we don't need sine here, but let me just write. No, we don't need it. Let's just write for dx, okay, so I don't waste time. So we have dx must be equal to 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. You need to know these two, dt. Oh, the T is already there. <laughs> That's it. These are the only two things that are relevant. And if you make that substitution based on this, you will get your answer immediately. Viceroy's substitution. So here, I'm going to say that I is equal to the integral of, let's put negative 1 here. Let's write equals negative 1 dx. Um, plus, I'm going to pull out the 5, so I'm going to have 5 times the integral of 1 over, this is going to be, oh, d dx is on the, okay, I'll put it on the side. So this is going to be 2 minus 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared multiplied by 2 over 1 plus t squared, okay, um, dt. I have to first resolve what I have here, okay? So if you give these two a common denominator, you will end up with 2 plus 2t two squared minus 1 plus t squared. So you end up with this expression. This is going to be, um, let's just integrate this. This is going to be negative x negative x plus this 2 is going to come back all the way here. You get 10 times the integral of, and then this will eventually cancel this. You end up with 1 over, if you simplify this, 1 plus 3t squared. Let's write dt here. That's it. That's what we get as our integral. Okay? You just give this a common denominator, you simplify it, you're gonna have this on top over one plus t squared, this will cancel this, so this is gonna be one over one plus t squared, and that's it. Now, do we know how to integrate this? Now, this is something else that you want to have, just as I showed you that as a standard concept. You see this? You wanna make sure that you have this in your head. Okay, the sign version just looks like this, it's just that instead of you having up two here, you're going to be having 2t, not just two. There's going to be 2t. That's it. That's the only difference between dx and sine x. Okay, now, one thing you must know is that whenever you integrate 1 over, watch this, a squared plus b squared x squared, let's do dx. This integral is the same thing as 1 over a times b a times b arctan of b over a x. This is the result of this. This is a standard integral that you want to memorize, and this works for all of them, as long as you know what you're using. Negative x plus 10 times the integral of 1 over I'm going to write this as 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared t squared, okay? And I'm going to write dt here, okay? Following this rule, we know that our answer i is going to be negative x plus 10, 1 over a, b. What is a in this case? a is 1, b is root 3. So that's going to be 10 over square root of 3 multiplied by arctan 
of b over a, which is square root of 3 over 1. That's just going to be square root of 3t. That's it. But we know we did not start with t. What did we say t was? We said t was 10x over 2. So that's what we've got to say. We just need to replace it and say this is ultimately equal to negative x plus 10 over square root of 3 arc tan <laughs> tan x over 2. This is this integral. Now, do you think that the answer we're going to get on this side will look like this? No way, because we cannot use via square substitution. Here, a, a clean u substitution is going to work. So how do I know that u substitution is going to work here? Because I know that if I make this my u, the derivative of this is just going to be e to the x. And I can isolate e to the x from here and write it in terms of u, and that's it. So look at this. Let's just say let u be equal to 2 minus e to the x. Then we immediately know that e to the x must be equal to 2 minus u. Right? And we know that du will be equal to negative e to the x dx. But we don't have negative e to the x dx on top, but we can write e to the x in terms of u. So we can go here and say that dx is actually the negative of this, right? du over the negative of this. So we can say that dx is equal to du divided by the negative of e to the x. The negative of this is going to be u minus 2. And that's it. Therefore, this integral i is equal to, this integral, we're just going to write negative x, okay, plus the integral. We pull out the 5. We can put the 5 here. We got du over u times u minus 2. This clearly gives you the vibes of partial fraction decomposition because this is a quadratic that can be factored. So you can break this into two. So you can see this is negative x plus five times the integral of a over u plus b over u minus two du, okay? Now, you all know how to integrate. Let's assume we don't know what a is. We don't know what b is. We can find our final answer. It's negative x plus this is going to be, this a comes out, 5 into, let's just write it as a times the natural log of u, right? Plus b times the natural log of u minus 2. Absolute value. All we need is to know what A is and what B is. And with partial fraction decomposition, you can do that. Now, by the time you do that, you notice that your A is going to be negative 1 half. This is going to be 1 half. And you can plug in those two numbers here. So you have this is equal to negative x plus 5 into this is negative 1 half. Um, I'll put this in front since this is the positive one. So it's going to be 1 half of the natural log of u minus 2 minus, you know what? I can factor out the 1 half. And then here <laughs> you have um, the natural log of the absolute value of u. Nice. So here, what do we have? We're going to have negative x. So i equals negative x. And then this will be 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2, the natural log of, this is going to be negative e to the x, negative e to the x over, u is 
2 minus e to the x, which is the same thing as e to the x minus u. It doesn't matter. The point is, whether it's positive or negative doesn't matter because it's inside the absolute value. So this negative sign too doesn't matter. And that's our final answer. You see how u substitution and partial fraction decomposition are what are relevant to this problem because of the nature of the exponential function. But here, vice through substitution is the path to go. So there is no universal way. The structure might look the same, but the functions involved will determine the strategy that you use. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.